Jason, what you doing? Tom on. I'm leaving on vacation soon. I thought I'd get some practice in. Well, it looks like you need it. You left that boom really high. No, I didn't. I always spray with the boom this high. Boom height's no big deal. Actually, Jason, that's a myth. Surely you adjust your boom height to account for field conditions and things like nozzle choice. Well, I have it high enough to stop from knocking the nozzles off. And don't call me Shirley. It's not that simple, Jason. We're gonna need some visuals, I think. Boom height is one of the most important and overlooked aspects of proper sprayer operation. Booms that are too high might protect hardware from damage, but they greatly increase the risk of drift. They can also increase the risk of poor coverage if the spray is blown around before it hits the canopy. Booms that are too low do reduce drift, but they can also create gaps in the spray pattern and increase the risk of damage. So how do I know what height to set my boom? Well, boom should be set as low as possible without creating additional problems. The actual height is gonna depend on the nozzle choice and its pressure. The pressure of one of these? Perfect. Nozzle manufacturers print critical nozzle information somewhere on the tip itself. While a few operators still use 80 degree fans, most use 110 degree fans because it increases spray overlap and reduces the risk of gaps in the pattern. Nozzle spacing, fan angle, and boom height are related. Yeah, no. I still don't get how nozzle spacing and fan angle affect boom height. Hmm, okay, let's try this. Let's pretend we're nozzles, okay? We'll turn here and our arms represent the fans. Okay, now let's say the ground is about here and we're about 20 inches apart, which is typical. Now lower your arms until we're at 80 degrees. Okay. So notice we don't have a lot of overlap here and the edge of the fan is actually where the droplets are fewest and largest. Oh. This can also happen when the pressure drops, for example, when we slow down with an automatic rate controller. Now, raise your arms until they're at 110 degree. Ah, we're back to 100% overlap. The edge of one fan meets the center of the next. That's right. See, now our droplets are distributed uniformly under the boom and we get good coverage. Okay, so I get nozzle angle and spacing, but I still don't understand what that has to do with boom height. Wow, you do need a vacation. Could you bring your boots? Why? Did I bring my boots, he says. Sheesh. When nozzle spacing and fan angle are constant, boom height controls the overlap. If the boom is too high, you might get lots of overlap, but the spray is more likely to drift off course and miss the target. Notice that the spray deposit can also become more variable. If the boom is too low, the spray hits the target before the fans overlap, creating gaps in the deposit between the nozzles. Now we're actually applying too much directly under the nozzles. The boom height at which the spray patterns achieve 100% overlap right at the target is ideal. We obtain the most uniform deposit this way, paving the way for good product performance. Wait a minute. The label says 20 inch nozzle spacing, 20 inches off the target. Why don't we just use a tape measure? Well, the problem is sometimes you're spraying a herbicide on ground or maybe you're spraying a fungicide somewhere into the canopy. Where do you measure from? Uh, the best way to do it is to use your eyes, okay? You set the boom height at the height where you achieve the 100% coverage that you need, be that the ground or somewhere in the canopy you're trying to reach. What about boom sway? Boom sway is a common problem. Consider an auto leveling system or a more sophisticated boom linkage or simply slowing down or probably all three. It's worth it because low booms reduce drift and improve coverage. Okay, I'm gonna start setting my boom so I get 100% overlap at the target. Anyway, I gotta get going. My plane leaves in an hour. Hey, are those my glasses? <laughs>